This is the second video in a series where we're making a Zelda-like game. Last time we covered animations and movement, now for the attack. So going back to that same event, where the hero is not carrying anything, we have a sub-event where, if you're pressing the J key, it changes the state variable to attack. And then the two events below it both have that as a condition, where the text variable can't be attack, and so those two are skipped over. Which means we get down to the bottom now, where we've changed the state, and so we set the animation to equal the direction that you're already in, plus attack. But for attacking, you don't want to be able to move around while you're doing it. Typically in games like this, you stand still. So below everything is a deactivate controls event, where if the text of the variable state of the hero is attack or lift, and by the way, you get this or condition by just searching for or. But whether you're attacking or lifting, we use the D slash activate a behavior action and set it to no. So it disables the behavior so the player can't move. And then at the top of the event sheet, there's an event for if the animation isn't attack or lift, then we set that behavior back to active by setting it to yes. And then to come full circle, the event for changing the state back to idle has a condition where if the animation of hero ever finishes, it changes back to idle. And if we go to the hero object, you'll see that all the animations are set to loop, except for the attack and lift animations, which aren't. And so those animations are the only ones that can finish. So they reset back to idle. So now when I press J, there we go. And now for picking up and throwing objects. If we go to the hero's points, we have a lift point, which is where the jar is getting lifted to, and where you're walking around with the jar. And then just like for animations, we have points for down, up, left, and right. And we have that animation for lift. And of course that boolean variable for whether or not you're carrying an object. And now in the events sheet, under the choosing state section, we have an event where if the H key is pressed, trigger once, and then down here, we check to see if there's a point inside the jar object, and instead of using the name of a point, the game is using the text in the hero variable direction. So the point being used changes based on the direction you're facing. And when these conditions are true, we change the state of the hero to lift, sets the boolean variable lifted of the jar, which just tells us which jar is being lifted, to true, and then set the boolean variable of the character for whether or not they're carrying an object to true as well. So then we know they're carrying the object. And finally, we need to tween the jar. So we need to add the tween behavior to the jar. And to do that, you just go to add behavior and it's right there for tween. So we add the action, tween the position of jar to the hero's lift point for both the X and Y position and set that to 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And now because we've set the hero's boolean variable for carrying an object to true, we're skipping that next event, which means that now we're working with the events below it. But these aren't going to trigger this time because of this condition, which is whether or not the tween lift of the jar has finished playing. So these don't trigger while the jar is being lifted. So now we're in the state lift, which means the state has changed, and the new name to change the animation to is the direction and lift. And so the top-down behavior gets deactivated while the jar is being lifted. And when the animation is no longer lift, we get the controls back. And so that happens here. Because we are carrying an object, the tween lift has finished playing, and now, if the hero isn't moving, we change the state to item stand. And if the hero is moving, we change the state to item walk. And if the boolean value of the variable lifted of the jar is true, which picks the jar that we're carrying, change that jar's Z order to the hero plus one, and change the position to the X and Y of the lift point. So it's above our head and above us in Z order. So now just like walking before, whenever I'm not moving, it's changing to the direction plus idle or item stand. And whenever I am moving, it's changing to direction plus item walk. And those are the animations that are being picked. And so to make this work, you need to make sure that your animation names are all written properly. And the very last thing is throwing the jar for which there might be an easier way to do it than how I did, but here we go. So when the H key is pressed, and both the jars and hero's boolean variables are true to let us know that the hero is carrying something and the jar is being carried, 
We set the boolean variable for the hero for carrying object to false, so you're not carrying anything anymore, and tween the position of the jar to the x position of the hero's point of the direction they're facing, minus the hero's x position. So if they're looking to the left, that's the point behind them, minus the x position of the point under their feet, which gives us the difference. So if we do that for the left, we get a negative, and if we do it for the right, we get a positive, which tells us which direction to throw the jar, either in the positive, the right, or the negative, the left. And then we add the hero's x position to know where to start the throw. And then we do the same thing for the y position, but using the y coordinates instead. The tween identifier for this one I just wrote down throw, and the duration again was 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And then at the end of the throw, I'm deleting the object. And you could create another event to change the animation when the throw finishes, but this worked out for the example. There are a bunch of other examples in GDevelop to teach you different mechanics that you might need to know, and I'll put some of those in the description, like the example that shows you camera movement from one room to another. But if you want to learn how to actually attack and do proper melee combat for your game, then check out this video.